Hey everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter, and in this episode, I'm gonna be showing you how I organize the architecture of my front end website projects. Back in the Dizay, it was a lot easier to make websites. You had one index.html file, and you had a couple of CSS files inside of a directory, and you had a maybe one JavaScript file or two at the most kind of running over here, and you just linked those JavaScript and CSS files in your website, pow, 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 and it was super duper easy. That was awesome, but nowadays it's even more awesome because we have pre-processing, so we can write our CSS like it should be. We have task runners, so we can modularize all of our kind of CSS and our JavaScript and have the pre-processor kind of suck all of that up and put it into one compressed CSS file, one compressed JavaScript file. It's really, really nice. It's really, really awesome. You should be pre-processing your CSS. It's super duper awesome. If you're not doing that, make sure to check out the video that I'm gonna link up here on how to pre-process your CSS in three different ways in three minutes. There's three options to get you started like boom, boom, boom. So let's do that first if you need to and come back. So let's dive into the computer now and I'm gonna show you how I set up every front-end project before I start and how it would look even after it's done. Okay, so the first thing you can see is I have two main directories in my project, but I have a source folder and I have a build folder. Let me explain these two really quick. Source is the place where you're gonna have all of your source code, your original kind of code that you're writing. That's the stuff that actually matters, okay? That's the stuff you wanna send up to the GitHub repo, that's the stuff you don't wanna lose, that you wanna make sure is all in good order, okay? Because you can run this through any kind of task runner or any sort of code kit or gulp file or whatever, and it's always gonna, gonna process out and build the same website every time you do it, okay? And the interesting thing is that, just like I said, it's gonna build and rebuild. So you're gonna, as you change your source files, it's going to suck everything out and then build it into your build folder or your build directory. And so that one's gonna be constantly getting overwritten. So you don't have to worry about that one as much until the project's done and you're uploading the files onto the server or into your WordPress site or whatever you're gonna do. You have source and you have build. I'm gonna open up my source folder and show you what's in there. Because I, I think the build folder is pretty self -explanatory. When you open a build, you have all the directories you might need, like images and scripts and styles and videos, and you have one main CSS. I have a style map, right? I have a CSS map in there so I can use that when I'm using like browser tools. And you have all your HTML pages. Like that's just the normal website. I could take this whole build folder and I do just upload that, you know, uh, FTP that up to the server when you're ready. When I open up the source folder, the first thing you'll see is I have no HTML files or anything in there. But what you will see is I have a nothing but a scripts and a styles folder. These are the things that make your website, right? Is the CSS and the JavaScript, okay? It's, it's changing the style and the functionality and the interaction of your website. And so each one of these are gonna have some similar kind of structure to them when I open them up. Inside of my styles is where I keep all my CSS, and inside of my scripts is where I keep all of my JavaScript, okay? Let's tackle the JavaScript first since it's right there for us, okay? I have one main app.js file, okay? And so I've written all of my, my JavaScript in there. And then I have a vendors directory. When I open up vendors, that's any and all kind of third-party plugins or libraries that I wanna use, I shove those in the vendors. Like that's, I went out and I got that from someone and from somewhere, and I've placed it inside of here. Now, again, whether you're using like a task runner or code kit, you can see in my app.js folder, I'm just prepending all of those different vendor related scripts and JavaScript into my folder. So all of those are running in this file before we get to my document.ready function because I'm using jQuery here. So you can see all of those things are gonna run before I hit my code. And this all is gonna get sucked out and processed into one app.min.js, okay? The minified version of it. And so really, really easy, I have just my app.js, it's bringing in all of my vendor scripts and it's sitting inside of my scripts file and it's sitting inside of my source file and all that's gonna make its way over to the build folder. Really, really nice. Okay, next, let's talk about my architecture for CSS because that's like the real fun stuff, okay? When I get into the architecture for the CSS, I have a couple of different directories here down the left side of my screen. You can see I have something called plugins, I have helpers, I have base layout modules and templates, okay? Now, um, 
I have them all numbered so they kind of stay in the order that I want because there are times when just through specificity, you want certain things to process first and you want other things to process last. And so you can see down in my main CSS file, let's just open that up. I have everything running in a certain order. And I think I actually got these out of order, but basically like I'm running all of my helpers first. So let's talk about what helpers are. Helpers are all of my SAS related kind of things like functions, mixins, variables. So you can see I can open up my variable. That's what I would call a helper. I wanna establish all of those things at the top of my CSS file. And then I wanna be able to use those throughout the rest of the file. None of these helpers that I've created in, in this directory need to come after something like a reset or a modernizer or anything like that. They can all go before and then I can have some sort of CSS reset and then after that, now we're just flowing through it, okay? So this is where I keep all of my variables, all of my mix-ins, right? I don't have very many for this project, but you can see that's, that's what's going on here. And, and also, structure note, when you look inside of the helpers file, okay, you'll see that I'll always have another file named helper.scss, right? So this is just a partial, what we call partial in SAS. It has that underscore before it, and that lets SAS know, hey, this is gonna become part or, part of a greater file. Okay, so I have this helpers kind of like partial, and inside of it, I'm importing the other three partials from the helpers directory. So inside each one of these subdirectories, these sub style directories, I have the partial that's gonna bring it to the main style sheet and then have all the individual kind of modular partials, okay? Inside of my plugins folder, okay, is where I actually keep like any and all plugin type stuff that I'm gonna use. Like in this project, I'm using like Bourbon and Neat for like kind of structure and, and typography and stuff like that and responsive stuff. And then I have a couple other almost like vendors, right? Like I'm using like some sort of different jQuery plugin, right? Here's the corresponding like CSS that goes with that vendor like JavaScript file that was in the, the scripts directory. All that stuff is kept here in the plugins. Okay, so we had plugins, we had helpers. Now we go down to base, and you can see within the base directory, I'm gonna keep my global styles, okay? So that's stuff like HTML, things that affect like global containers, link styles, not very much goes in there because things belong, things belong in other places, right? Then after that, I just have a reset as a partial, so just like a CSS reset. I have an entire partial that's used solely for typography. My vertical rhythm is here, all my style settings for like typography, you can find them all right there, boom, easy. Next we get to one of the biggest directories, which is actually layout. So we want to just kind of like, uh, whatever way that you write CSS, whether you're writing like BEM CSS or like Smack CSS, and like the way that you're just kind of like trying to module, make sure it's modular and organized, whatever, you do you. Me, I just kind of break things into large chunks on the page. So I'm being modular about it. Like here's my footer, okay? Here's my navigation styles. And so if I'm ever wondering like, okay, I, I need to change the, navig the color of the navigation on this page, I always just start from the top down, right? I'm going, okay, is it in my plugins? No, it's not there. Is it in my helpers? Maybe, because it might be a variable color. So I'll go change that variable color. Maybe I want that to be a global thing. I don't want it to be a, a global thing. I just want it to be specific to the header or the navigation. Okay, I'm gonna keep cruising. Is it in the base? Is it in the layout? Yes, it's in layout. So I just, when I ask that question, I go from top to bottom. That's really, really easy to track down where it is. Or you can just use the developer tools and find exactly where it is using a CSS map. Boom. Um, okay, next we have modules. I refer to modules as anything um, that isn't like global layout, like footers, headers, sidebars, navigation. Those are layout kind of like features. Whereas I would refer to anything as a module that can be interchangeable in every page, right? So you can see, for instance, I have like a feature statement module or like this two column module or like a video module. And that CSS is written very modular so that I can take that in the HTML and just pop in a, some sort of div or a video with a class video container and bam, it's, it is something you can use anywhere across any page or layout, okay? And then we're gonna get into now templates, okay? The templates would be like specific needs for a certain template. And usually those are like one-off templates because if you're smart, your websites are built modularly. 
then you're just kind of rearranging modular pieces. And don't even get me started about now using CSS Grid, how modular things can be and should be. But sometimes you just have that weird one-off kind of layout and and that's where the templates kind of come into place. Like these templates are gonna override because they're coming after like all the modules and layouts. They're, at, they're gonna come after in the rules of specificity and so that's the thing that's gonna be read last and they're gonna alter and change anything you need to about, for me here, it's like a home page or a jobs page and you can see I'm just saying, hey, specifically, I had something going on that page, change it up a little bit, make it unique, okay? And so that's it. That's how I structure the architecture of my sites. Each of them are in their own directories, inside the style directory, inside the source directory, Ah, it's such a beautiful thing when you just get everything organized and you're making websites and now I know every time I make a website, this is how I make a website. What's really cool is now that I have a way that I architect my websites and my, my projects, when I talk to other people, I want to know how they do it. I want to know how they architect their projects. Maybe they have a more effective way and what's really interesting is it's like Two architects can talk about the way that they make buildings and they can appreciate what they did in that structure, that foundation, that building, whatever. It's the same thing here. You can talk to another like front end developer and say, how are you doing yours? Or maybe you're working on a team with that guy. You can show him how you do yours. He can show you how he does his. You can compare your styles of architecture. And then if I need to pick his, I can do that because I understand he's got his way. I can work within his boundaries. It may not make perfect sense because I have my preference, but it's, it doesn't matter. It's just preference. Well, that's it. That's the way that I structure my front end projects and I reuse that structure in every project. It doesn't matter what way you're pre-processing. It doesn't matter what you're using. It doesn't even matter actually how you structure your sites or your projects. It just matters that you structure them in some way, right? Increase that workflow, increase that productivity, start making sense. And, and it just becomes incredibly easy to troubleshoot things once you're, once it's your fourth or your fifth or your sixth website that you're doing like this, dude, it just makes it so easy to start tracking down the bugs and figuring things out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, maybe consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I like to do lots of video tutorials about design and front end development and coding techniques just like this one. So I hope you'll stick around. I hope you guys are making amazing stuff, designing amazing stuff, coding amazing projects and having an amazing week. I'll talk to you guys soon.